All right, guys. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create this cross-hatching effect in Photoshop. If you notice, it's a pretty detailed octopus. And this, this is something I drew in Illustrator. Then I brought it in. You can notice how I have uh, several layers here. And I'm going to show you how I was able to create this effect um, using Photoshop. Uh, first of all, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, I'm going to open up my image or whatever image you guys have. I recommend to be a high resolution image. It works the best that way. Uh, you can always scale it down. You know, don't have uh, no issues of, uh, you know, creating a big document with uh, nice detail. So, my image size, um, it's going to be pretty big. It's going to be a 11 by 17, 300 DPI. Right now, I'm zoomed in uh, 33%. If I zoom in 100%, you're going to notice that now you can actually see the actual detail from my design. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to remove this background. Now, there's this new setting in Photoshop that is unlike a lot. It says select subject, and you just let Photoshop do the thing and trying to find the selection within your object. Now, the only thing um, this one did is basically kind of didn't select this part, this tentacle of my um, of my octopus. Now, normally it does a pretty good job cutting it out. I don't know why I did this, but I'm just going to grab my magic wand too. And I'm just going to click on the white area. And that should do it because everything around is nice and clean. So one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to create a mask. And the simplest way to create a mask in uh, Photoshop is if you select the layer. I'm going to click on the mask tool right here at the bottom. It says add layer mask. And uh, right now what I did is I, I click on the layer mask because what is selected is the white. So what I need to do is I want to go into select inverse now you're going to see your image uh, being selected now i see here that it didn't select this white area here and that's fine i can always select make sure you select your mask you can go under edit fill black make sure black hides white shows okay so that way he hides the white so i'm pretty happy with what i have now, the next step is how we can create the actual crosshatch effect. Now, I'm going to create a, a new document. And this document is going to be about 10 by 10 pixels. It's going to be very small. I'm going to change to, to grade scale and a white background. The grade scale is just to basically save space on the document. So I don't want it to be any colors. So if you're going to notice, it's going to be a tiny box. I hit Control-0. And now you're going to see that the, the box zooms in into this area. I'm going to grab my marquee, rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to click and drag and select probably like half of this document. If you notice, uh, automatically it's going to snap. You can see here, one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to give you that size, right? So. What I'm going to hit, I'm going to select Control I or Command I on the Mac. What that does, it does an invert. I'm going to deselect by uh, clicking back with my direct uh, with my uh, marquee tool. Just click outside or hit Command D to deselect or Control D on a PC. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a pattern, and I'm going to use a blur pattern. You notice here, filter, blur. And there's a box blur. Basically, what allows you to do, it allows you to kind of create boxes uh, as a blur, a pixelated way. And if you notice here, if I change the number of it, let's say I'm just highlighting the number. If I go with my up and down arrow, you're going to notice that the color count, uh, it goes less and less, right? So the higher the number, uh, the higher the transition on your gradation happens, right? But mine is about 10 pixels or whatever might be the case. So I don't have much gradation. I'm going to do mine about, let's say, for example, 
let's say about two for right now, just for this purpose, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go under Edit, Define Patterns. I'm not going to name it anything. I'm just going to leave it as is. And if you notice, it creates its own little pattern. It's just a one pixel pattern based on the content that I just created. I'm going to hit OK. Now, that's the one for my pattern. I'm going to create a new document. Now, this document is the one that is going to create my crosshatch effect. So I'm going to make this about 6,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels. Now, I'm going to make this a 300 DPI because I want it to be nice and, and big. And then that way, I can always scale it and bring it down to other files, and I can work around it. It's going to be a grayscale as well. I'm going to hit Create. Now we have this uh, white artboard, and I'm going to go under Edit, Fill. And under Fill, on the content, I'm going to click down the drop-down menu, and I'm going to select Pattern. In the Pattern, you're going to notice there's a custom patterns here. You're going to notice I have created already several patterns in there. Here's the one that I just created. Okay, and I know it was uh, Pattern 6. You can always name them uh, whichever way you want it. So I'm just going to select that pattern six. And I'm going to hit OK. Now you're going to notice that it created all this bunch of lines. And I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy when I zoom in. OK, so it created all these nice little straight lines. Now, this straight line is based on this little guy. So this guy is duplicating 6,000 by 6,000 times on my page all right so now what i'm going to do from here is i'm going to zoom out control zero i'm sorry for <laughs> making you a little dizzy and i'm going to apply an effect and the effects is going to be i'm going to go under filter and i'm going to apply a distortion and i'm going to use a wave now one of the things i'm going to do is i'm going to use this option the type is sign the number of generators are going to be 10. So basically, it's going to generate uh, 10 steps, right? Uh, and then the wavelength, I want it to be about 199 and 200 my max. Uh, the amplitude, I'm going to leave it about 5 and 6. And uh, these are some numbers that you guys can always uh, play around. If you notice, this is the amplitude right here. But I'm going to keep mine to about 5 and 6. I think that kind of works well. And and then you're going to see the scale. I'm going to keep everything to 100%. Okay, everything else stays the same. I'm going to hit OK. Now, if you zoom in, now you have this uh, ripple effect. Okay, so now one of the things I'm going to do from here is I'm going to create, I'm going to select all. If you hit Control A or Command A on the Mac, you're going to notice that it selects all your box. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to Edit Copy. Just to have that copy on my artboard, on my clipboard, I'm sorry. I'm going to create a new, I'm going to deselect Control Command D. I'm going to create a new adjustment solid color. Now, I'm going to make it like 50% gray, right? So I'm just going to put it here, 50. I'm going to hit OK. Now, if you notice, it creates a mask automatically. So I'm going to hold my Alt key or my Option key on the Mac, and I'm going to click on the mask, and I'm going to go to Edit, Paste. I'm going to paste that texture that I created with my wave inside my mask. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit, transform, uh, Free Transform. I'm going to right-click. And I'm going to go rotate this clockwise. OK. Now, now, once I have that, I'm going to go back and uh, hit my checkbox just to check that out, that I, that's what I want to do my change. I'm going to select my layer. And if you notice, um, let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. If you notice now, take a look at my effects now. It went from here to this. right? So now you have this nice little pattern uh sketchy kind of looking thing right and what i can do now i'm gonna merge both layers 
I can merge both layers. You don't have to merge them, but if you want to, you can merge them. And I'm going to go to edit. Uh, I'm going to hit Control A to select all, and I'm going to go edit copy. I'm going to go to my ocean creature here, and I'm going to go to edit paste. And it's going to bring my detail. If you hit Control T, you're going to notice that it's going to be somewhere in there. I'm just going to put it center. It just I like to keep my stuff center. So from here, I have my pattern. So let me name this uh, pattern. Now, I'm going to duplicate my original image, Command J or Control J. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Image Adjustment, and I'm going to use the saturation just to kind of change it to this gray tone. OK, and it's very important to do that. So now what's going to happen here, if I go into my pattern, I turn it on, and I change my blend mode like that to a hard mix. Take a look at this. Now you start getting this nice effect of a hatch, right? Kind of like a hatch pencil effect. Now, depending on the blend mode that you use, it's going to be a little bit different for each image, right? So I played around with some of the blend modes and I looked through them, see what I like the most. And heart mix was kind of the one that works. Now, how can I get rid of all the rest of the hatch around it? So if I hold my Alt or Option key between my pattern and my creature here, it's going to create this little arrow with the mask on the left-hand side. So that's going to create a clipping mask. And I click on it. And now we have this nice effect. Now, to take it even further, one of the things that I can do is I can select my layer here, and I can go into my adjustment layer. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to use this posterize effect. And I like this level of color. So we did this in the previous. So basically here, um, you're going to notice that I have different levels of color. So I got a two color. You get a three color or four colors. I kind of like the four color, the way it looks. Uh, you guys can play around with this. Each image is going to vary accordingly. So you just got to play around with this as well. If you want to do a five or six, that's cool. But you just got to remember, it's just depend on your image. So let's leave it at five. Now, from that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click again on my adjustment layer. I'm going to under levels. Within the levels, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to control how much black I want. You see here, I can control the amount of black and I can control the amount of white as well. So I can brighten up some of that white just to kind of start giving some highlights and some of this dark just kind of sipping through so you can start seeing some of that detail. Now I'm zoomed in 74%. If I go about 100%, this is how it's going to look when you bring it close to it. Right. So the beauty of this is that we're using non-destructive layers and basically we are controlling all those layers um, with all these little sliders. Right. So basically it allows it to, to give us a little bit more of the detail. We can lose some of the details without having uh, to destroy that layer. OK. Now, the other thing we can do is just kind of add a little edge, a little uh, border around it so that way we don't lose some of that detail. And the way you do that is just, I'm just going to double click on my grayscale layer and my layer style window will pop up. I select my stroke. In the stroke property, I just change my position to outside. And then you just got to control and see what's going to work the best, uh, what type of um, size is going to work. For me, five work great. So I kind of like that detail. And there you have it. And that's how you create that crosshatch effect. All right, guys. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, you can always uh, select your mask by holding the control command and click on the mask. And I can go into edit, copy merge. So that way I can copy everything 
uh, that is selected within all the layers. And I'm, I can create a new document and I can paste it in there. And there it is, my octopus on its own little layer as a hatch. And if I make it a smart object, and that's going to be a non-destructive layer, now I can actually scale it. Remember, in Photoshop, the newer version of Photoshop, if you hold the Shift key, it's going to destroy your object. Um, so just by holding the Option key, or the alt key allows you to scale proportional. And then this would allow you to move your object around. And there you have a nice object with the crosshatch effect. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Just let me know. Uh, any comments, that would be great. Enjoy it. Have a great day.